number of uh, comparisons here in terms of number of tornadoes. The 1974, the third one down. So 74 and 2011 show up no matter sort of how you, uh, and among the top ones, no matter how you compare the, some of the outbreaks, uh, as uh, usually in the top three, if you look at the full outbreak uh, in terms of the fatalities, the, the deadliest outbreak we've had is 1925, or 2011 and 74, a little farther down the list, we've had outbreaks in 1932 and 1908 that have been uh, embedded into either of those. Uh, and similar for the 24-hour periods. Number of injuries, uh, the uh, long Sunday outbreak of 1965 uh, sneaks into the top three with the two super outbreaks uh, in, the, in that uh, the top three rate ranking also. Number of killer tornadoes, 74 still leads the way. Number two is 2011. Number of strong and violent tornadoes, 74 still leads. Close call, close second there is 2011. Uh, number of violent tornadoes, uh, the Palm Sunday tornado outbreak comes in the, in the top three there with the other two super outbreaks. So by further measures, uh, we've got two super outbreaks and a few other outbreaks that, that sort of uh, or sneak into the top three or top five of, of some of the various uh, parameters. Wide tornadoes, the 2011 winds out. Interestingly there, uh, one of the earlier outbreaks in 2011, uh, they hit mostly the Carolinas, the 14th and 16th, sort of comes in the number, number two there. Uh, number of states having the tornadoes, the 2011 winds out, there are a few others there that, uh, that sneak in in that category. And uh, uh, we've seen in, of course, uh, the brevals from the, the, the supercell in, in, in Tuscaloosa, we've seen so much now uh, these days with modern popular era, when Dr. Fujita have uh, been uh, fantasized uh, by the, the kind of technology we have to work with now in terms of debris balls and tornado debris signatures from the dual pole. And uh, so we have so much more now uh, in the way of detecting tornadoes and the re-signature. Uh, but still, when these violent tornadoes go through highly populated areas, these violent tornadoes are capable of taking the four shots of Tuscaloosa at the bottom. And you can track individual locations there. This house, EF4, piles of rubble that's been cast along. Uh, still, we can still have uh, some very uh, very bad kind of tornadoes. Sort of finish off on a couple of things that maybe the 2011 outbreak has taught us uh, that we didn't see in 1974. Uh, one of the things that really has struck me is that in 2011 a couple of tornadoes were strong enough right down to the ground that it actually pulled sod out, not just one small clump, but big chunks of, uh, uh, big chunks of the soil pull out of the ground there to a depth of two feet or so. So uh, that sort of raises the question, and, and it's one that is sort of at, at the heart of the issue of how do we, and what tools do we use to rate tornadoes? Because sometimes we see tornadoes that are so strong right down at the grass level that it will pull sod out of the ground. At other times, the, the strong winds seem to be maybe only up at the treetop level. So we, Pull, knocks down the trees, some of the roof may damage a little bit, the flower pots are sitting untouched on the front porch of the house. Uh, so tornadoes and the Doppler, mobile Doppler radar show this. Sometimes the strongest wind is right down a few meters above the ground. Sometimes it's 50 meters aloft. So there seems to be some variation on where the fastest winds occur, which makes it hard then to know exactly how to use that mobile Doppler radar data in terms of the rating of the tornado. So part of the issue of, of the El Reno, National Weather Service headquarters says stick with the damage until we know how to, to use the, the, the mobile Doppler radar data sort of uniformly uh, in, in the rating tornado process. So there's sort of a panel that's, that's looking into some of that. 
but we've seen some of those evidences of the variations in tornadoes even in, in the damaged path. And so I guess to summarize, we've got two outbreaks now in my lifetime that, and I, and I hope no more uh, in my lifetime at least, that we call super outbreaks, but they're, they're not the only super outbreaks probably that are going to be seen in, in some of your lifetimes. History does repeat itself. We can never really let down our vigilance and we need to keep getting out the message to the public. We need to keep ourselves reminded as we heard some of the messages earlier in this conference that you also yourself need to respect tornadoes and, and stay safe. And, and that's the sort of message that I often give to my viewers. Stay safe. Thanks for attending. Thanks for having me.